welcome to Roy Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Airfix's latest release. This is the 172nd Avro Shackleton AEW2. Now, the Mark II one has the big chinny bulge at the front, which I must admit, I think looks cooler than the uh, first version. Now, this is basically an upgrade to their original kit, but what this one does do is go right alongside now Rebels version of this one, which they released over a year ago now. So, in a lot of ways, this has fixed the problem where a lot of people said the uh, Revell release was a great kit, no problem at all, but the fuselage cross-section was the wrong shape. Now, are you into that? Are you that worried about it? To me, personally, I've seen both models. I've seen them side by side. I couldn't tell the difference. So I think you really need to have a very close look at it. But from an accuracy point of view, a lot of people called the Airfix one far superior, actually, to the uh, Revell one. So lo and behold, now just been released, we've actually got the actual um, uh, Airfix one, which technically gets rid of all those problems. Now, you're always gonna do you know, comparisons between the two, obviously pricing uh, and detail, things like that. I was always a fan of actually the Rebel one, and I still maintain it's a fantastic kit if you've got it. But if you are a little bit of a rivet counter and you do want it to be 100% spot on, this one apparently is a lot more accurate. So, looking around on the box, we can see, as you know, it's 172nd scale. Okay, so your kit number for this one is A11005. Got a couple of marking options down on here. We've got a little bit of CAD work, as you can see down on the side, which is very similar to their other version. Uh, you've got a little bit of interior that, to be honest, you'll never see. Okay, a little bit round on the box. Uh, round on this way. So your two markings that you've actually got just down on here are, if I get it on the close-up one a little bit, uh, there we go, this is Dougal. Um, as a lot of you may know, the, the actual um, fleet of Shackleton's was named after the characters for the Magic Roundabout. Okay, so this is Dougal from number eight squadron uh, during uh, 1980. Uh, and is now at the uh, Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester, England. Okay, and we've got Ermintrude, number eight squadron, which is uh, Royal Air Force Lossiemouth, uh, northeast Scotland in 1979. Okay, so as you can see, a lovely little bit. Nothing on the back of this particular one. This is brand new, sealed. I haven't looked in it before, so we'll have a look-see in here. Okay, so stays that'd be lovely which it does as you can see the usual thing is we've got a very big box with not a massive amount of sprues down in here so if we just get rid of that okay we'll pop this little guy up here unfortunately my decals looks like I've taken a bit of a pounding uh, during transit so we'll look at those in a moment okay so on the old instruction sheet we can see uh, usual thing, it's going to be extremely similar, so if you want to skip forward, obviously, with the build and all the rest of it, you can obviously do that, no problem at all, if you've seen the previous review. Okay, so, usual thing, though, seats going right the way through, uh, depending if you're going to have them seated uh, with or without the crew, depends on different ones you're going to have down in there. And then working with the cockpit, where the actual cockpit station for the pilot and the co-pilot, you've got these big centre spars that run through the actual uh, the wing sections, gives it great uh, stability, this actual kit, and then running our way down, so we've got various details to make up the midsection uh, of the Shackleton right the way through okay and then right here, down here at the back I think it was with the old Sona boys and things like that was down the back of those ones the screens obviously all the information centers and everything else like that as you can imagine right the way through and putting in your bulkheads a couple of little holes to open up and little bits to sand away things like that as you make your way through on the actual fuselage section okay then you've got all the internals going in on the other side as well. So we've got these, uh, I think these are Sona Boy racks being fitted down in there and the parts for the actual tail section and then putting that midsection into there. And then obviously we've got uh, another bulkhead going through on the rear. Down into the cockpit section, you've got the forward part as well, the obser uh, observers area, uh, which used to have the guns back on the other versions, but this one obviously is now gun free. So it's actually the observers uh, quarters down on here so those being fitted down in the front and then obviously we've got uh, more observation deck uh, for the top which I presume is for the starlight uh, system and then obviously some more parts going down in there door being fitted things like that okay two halves going together so that buttons that up really nicely remembering to sort of sand back these tabs uh, making sure we do have separate control surfaces for the actual tail planes being fitted down here onto the rudder sections as well so you've got those and then it's working actually onto the bomb bay system uh, so depending if you're going to have the doors open or closed will depend on which versions you're going to be doing down on here so take a little bit of note here up here at the top 
forward uh, observers uh, bulge onto the front and then obviously you've got his window section and then we've got the instrument uh, sort of combing over the top being fitted in okay and then we've got some little bit of glass work and then obviously some parts being fitted uh, to the top for the overhead panels side windows going on and then again we've got the glass work all being put in there right now the nice thing with all this glass work it does go in afterwards so if you did want to paint it first that's absolutely great because you can paint the entire model then go in and put the glass work in afterwards which saves you a lot of time masking and fiddling around with it Okay, working over here on the engines then. So we've actually got the engine the cells being put through there with the undercarriage bays, some of the details going in there and in there. As before, very nice details if you're gonna have them. Or you can have one piece closed option for the actual doors. Okay, uh, undercarriage legs being fitted in and then the brace work going in for those and then the actual outboard engines being done as well. Wing sections going together, remembering to open up the odd little hole in those as well. So it's quite important to do that now. Okay, and then fitting the actual engine nacelles to the wing section, as you can imagine, and then sliding them along the little tabs uh, with the grooves to give you a very nice wing join section flaps so you can have flaps deployed or not again some nice details down in there if you are going to have the flaps all open you're going to have to do a little bit of trimming work just to get those in the open position but that's very straightforward on those and then tail wheel again if you're having it closed no problem but if you're having it open you've got those details showing those all being fitted in there we've got another blister going down underneath for this particular version as well tires which again are very nice because they are weighted as well so you've got that nice weight on wheel effect and again quite nice down in here so we can see exactly how the doors are supposed to lie um, in relation to the actual undercarriage things like that on to the front end then so this is where it's a little bit different so you've actually got this fairing system which is going to go in so the bombay isn't as big as it used to be then we've actually got the fairing for the radome and then that being fitted down there onto the nose and then you've got the rear part then uh, down in here if you're doing it obviously open and close things like that for the actual bombay okay all the torpedo bays down being fitted down in there okay then we've got the spraces things like that we've got the long antennas running down the sides as well and then obviously we've got these uh, blisters on the side being fitted in there just like that nav lights pitot tubes things like that and sensors all being fitted down in there activated rods uh, for the uh, control surfaces obviously being fitted in there we've got a big old aerial on the top going in and then obviously lots of little aerials things like that all over it props obviously it's counter rotating props as far the old version so you'd be fitting those sections all together and then a few more blades and antennas and then dropping those in on the front. More blades and antennas, as you can imagine, right the way over this one. And then we've got a nice boarding ladder as well, which is a lovely little touch for this particular kit. And there we go. So you can see it's not a shake and bake. It's not a very, you know, going to be a quick build or anything else like that. There's quite a lot to this one. So we've already spoken about the markings, but you can see them a little bit more on here. So there we go. This is the number eight squadron. So this is Dougal. If you're going to be doing Dougal, that's the markings you're going to be putting down on there. And then obviously, if you're going to be doing Ermintrude, uh, you've got them down there as well. Okay, so that's those. Stencil data, quite a lot for this particular bird, as you can see. So nice, easy call outs going through all of those. So that shouldn't be a problem either. Okay. Right, and now decals, which as I said, I might have taken a little bit of a hit. Okay, as you can see down on there, uh, unfortunately, but I th luckily it's just on a few little areas I don't think are going to matter. But again, Airfix do seem to have got this nailed down now. We do seem to have very, very nice clean printed and they're not too matte, they're not too glossy, they tend to be just about right. The carrier film can be a little bit matte, shall we say, but generally the markings, no problem at all. What is nice, obviously we've got some good uh, walkway lines, things like that, all been re uh, done. And then obviously we've got the props and the markings, all things like that. And then hopefully, there we go, we have Dougal down in here. Okay, and we have Ermintrude over here. Okay, so there we are, absolutely beautifully done. Very nice indeed. So, onto the plastic. Okay, so I don't know how we're going to get in here because it's uh, melted in the one. So. Along the melted line. Let's try and get some of this out. Okay, so we've got a few little parts running loose in the bag. Okay, so we've got some bits that have become detached. Uh, for instance, this little guy here, it could be something, so I'm going to leave it back in the bag. 
And like down in here, we always say check your bags because we've definitely got a part that's used as well. So we've got this little guy running around the bottom of the bag as well. So never just pull them out the bag and throw it because bits like that do come detached. And that's what we're saying about separate bags is quite nice because you know where you're at with those. Right, okay, so. Sprue one, if we just drop this camera down just a little bit. Okay. Okay, so looking down on the fuselage, as you can probably see, we've got a lot of the components down on here. To start with, it looks like it's Airfix's new plastic, which is a lot more sharper, crisper. The molding tends to be sharper and everything else like that uh, than what we've seen before. Unfortunately, and this is always going to be the downside with this particular kit, it doesn't have all the riveting detail that the Shackleton is absolutely legendary for. There's many stories about something like, you know, 10 million rivets following in formation. Uh, the Ravel kit has them this one doesn't okay unfortunately so you're always going to be in that situation or are you going to actually re-rivet the entire thing it wouldn't take too much to do it with a good set of riveting tools but it's just going to take a little bit of time and patience okay generally though we are very nice we do have some interesting things going on straight away which i can see down in here like what this is i have no idea you might also notice we've got some incredibly heavy ejector pin work which has obviously forced the mold to get out we've got them over here now none of these are coming th that one actually is that is slightly raised where it's pushed through so heavily um, to try and get it out of the mold it's actually deformed the panel line as well that runs alongside it so a little bit of a shame there uh, that it's done that but generally it's pretty much as par the original releasing uh, we do have the odd ejector pin as well, which is in the middle of the detail, which isn't exactly brilliant. But generally, as you can see, it's very nicely done uh, to a point. And then you tend to think, but uh, this one seems to be no problem. It just seems a little bit crude, shall we say. It doesn't seem as sharp and as nice as other things. The other thing uh, is we've got big sink marks. You might see them. Let me get in the close-up. Perhaps you can get it down in here. But there's a sink mark right in the middle of this rudder and there's a small one i think on the other side of it as well so you might need to do something with that so unfortunately you've got a little bit of flash running around it as well sorry to say this one airfix but this isn't the best job ever the plastic is an improvement i prefer this style of plastic than the softer plastic but unfortunately uh, it's not as forgiving as the other types of plastic shall we say uh, from the injection molding process so again we've got this little bit of wear and tear get down in this side various sink marks all over it as well we've got a sink mark up here as well on this little guy and everything else but never mind let's have a look around at some of the parts a little bit more closely so as you can see i think we just over egg that camera just a little bit just bring that one out there we go okay so over here at the top as i said this is that sink mark you can see it just down in there quite clearly actually on the camera and again we've got little sink marks just down on the back of this guy okay and on this one so we've got these things floor bombay section over here looking pretty nice some of these little guys have come off of the sprue and then obviously looking around at the catch it in the light you can see devoid of all riveting detail but the panel lining is actually quite nice very nice indeed okay and then we've got some more of these running right the way down no problem at all really nice that they've actually got the interior details in here it's just a shame you're not really going to see them okay that one's over there okay onto the wing section so we've got the upper wings just down on here again very nice um you can probably catch it there in the overheads uh all the riveting detail all the sorry the raised and recessed details right the way over this no problems at all but again it's just lacking the rivets i've always said with this kit just lacking the rivets but again beautiful detail down here on the underside for the actual uh, flap areas things like that for the internals but if we catch it in the light you can see again it's nice recessed paneling it's just missing the rivets just needs those rivets and it'll be good to go okay so that's not too bad okay underside again a nice mixture of uh, raised and recessed details on these no problem at all and then obviously on the close-up as you can see again i just always think it just needs to have that work just needs that little bit extra of the actual riveting detail to make this thing correct and i know what a lot of people are going to turn around now and say but the thing is the 
it shouldn't be recessed rivets because they're not. They're raised, very pronounced rivets, which I agree with you. But, you know, it is that thing. Okay, so this is the new sprue, if you like. So there's a couple of new little parts on here. So this is the back end of the newer shortened Bombay system. Then we've got the blister on there, which seems to be okay. It's a two part, there's no real sink marks in there that I can see. Then we've got the internal for the actual uh, Bombay as well in there and a couple more blades and various things. So this is your upgraded part for this one. Again, no problems with any of that. That's absolutely fine on there. Seems to be great, okay. So we've got the um, various cockpit panels, gear, uh, and other areas, uh, doors. Where are blades come off here somewhere as well, so we need to find that in a moment. But generally, looking around, you can see the consoles uh, for the uh, crew. They look quite nicely done. And again, we've got various details on these panels and things. We've got the wheel well bay for the tail. And then obviously we've got these main gear parts, all the rest of it. And then the actual bulkheads for the main gear and then obviously lots of props eight props over this particular one and to be honest they all look okay no sink marks in there or anything else i think we're all okay with all of that ejector pins seem to be quite shallow these don't seem to have punched through anywhere the only problem seems to be is on that actual fuselage section okay so we've got a few more parts that have come off down in here so on this particular sprue as you can see it's quite a large one we've got various engine parts things like that down on there no problem at all with any of those the bombay areas and things the actual engine fronts so as we can see them down on there the gear looks actually very nicely done as well with all of that and then these engine nacelles nicely detailed various things going on on there as I say we have got two of these that come off okay and some more of these parts but generally again very nice really nice detail as you can probably see under here for these uh, flaps which actually do not have any ejector pins in them. So it's amazing how they can do it in some areas. The other thing as well, some really nice detail down in here for the side walls of the main gear wells in those engine nacelles as well. So that's a really nice touch with those. Okay, some of the smaller parts. So we've got instrument panels and various things down in here, rudder pedals, and then obviously more of the, the, the rack and various things. It's parts like these you really have to worry with when they're in a bag chucked together. You know, he's got big, long, spidery legs. It's a wonder he's still in one bit. Okay, but generally though, really nice details. Can't see a problem with any of that. There's a tiny little bit of burring, uh, which is like the seam line between the two on these uh, antennas underneath here that you maybe just want to take care of and uh, get rid of those. But generally looking around, as you can see, Actually, all of those parts are really very nice, very crisp. Can't see any problems with any of that at all. The ejector pins as well, they do seem to be okay. though They're not massively huge tunnels. Oh, there's a prop. Okay. So on this guy, obviously, it's all the seats. So we've actually got the crew seats up here. And then we've got a few little pilot figures and things like that. A lot of these aerials are more seats and various parts for the engines. Uh, so we've got the exhaust coming off of there, then obviously we've got the spinners and the spinner assemblies around on there, and obviously air has got a little bit of flash on that ladder, and there's that other door. So, yeah, not too bad at all. And the crew, your standard type of airfix crew, as you can see down in there, but generally that's all okay. And again, a few parts that have come off, they seem to be okay, no problems at all. Okay, and those, we'll get those fixed up in a moment, get them back in. Last up, we've got the clear parts. So, a little knife in here. Okay. Again, really nice. Airfix really seem to have stepped up their clear work recently, because these are, as you can see, all very, very nice. No problems with any of that whatsoever really good got raised details down here which just makes the masking a little bit easier as well on that main canopy area for the crew but everything else the observers one things like that tail very nice indeed but all the windows crystal clear no problems with any of that whatsoever so there we go it is not a perfect kit let's face it i'm not gonna you know um, sugarcoat anything for me i still maintain i prefer the revel one 
this is a great kit and to be honest with you this is a better shape kit and it's got a lot more it's more accurate than the Revel one but then I'm drawn to the Revel one purely because of all the riveting detail that I know it's recessed it's not raised it's technically not correct but just from an aesthetics point of view and looking at it I think the Revel one just lends itself a little bit better even though it's the wrong shape and it should be raised rivets and not recessed rivets it just looks a little bit better to the eye but that said if you want to go for something that's really totally accurate this is the kit you're going to go for because it has got the better shape and it's got a few nicer parts running around all this one they're a little bit more accurate than obviously the rebel one are so there again it depends if you are in that thing of saying are you a rivet counter and you're looking for the most accurate version of the shackleton you're going to get or are you thinking you want the best looking thing you can get from a viewer's point of view and perhaps the casual observer or perhaps somebody who doesn't really know what a Shackleton is uh, and stuff like that so in some ways both of them are fantastic kits you've got that version of saying that's highly accurate but it needs a little bit of work and riveting so that is what you're going to go with or you've got the other one with the Revel one thinking from an aesthetics point of view and just looking at it looks a nicer one to do even though it is incorrect so both of them are absolutely fantastic kits I can't call between the two because obviously it's down to you and your preference of being highly accurate and you know a better kit all round or do you want to go down that thing of saying right okay I'm just going to go in because it looks a nicer kit it's going to be easier to work with and I haven't got to re-rivet it so in that point of view they are both absolute winners to me so there we go that's F fixes 172nd Avro Shackleton AEW Mark II.